Hey guys, welcome back to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. These videos are made for a beginner building a tiny house with helpful tips and tricks. In this video, I'm going to be installing rim boards and ledgers. This is going to be part one of a two part video series. The link for part two, where I'll be installing joists and then the hangers, will be in the description below. So, the first thing I need to do is start cutting down my 2x6s. What I recommend doing is taking the board like this, marking your, your length, making sure that point goes right to the, the point on where you want it on your tape measure. And take your square, put it on that, and mark it. When you're cutting, you can hold the safety up. Put the blade right on the mark, and there's also a, a reference point on the front here, which the line ups right will, will line up right here, and that's how you know the blade's in line. You can see it's a pretty decent cut. Now that I have all my pieces cut, I can set up the table saw and rip them down to five and an eighth. Setting up your table saw so it doesn't move will end up saving you some time. So I'm just going to tack it in here. When I'm ripping these boards, they're going to end up hanging off here and they're going to want to fall. I'm just going to put a block over there. I'm just going to measure from the frame to the top of my uh, table saw, which is 11 and an eighth ish. Uh, I'm going to make it. 10 and 15 sixteenths. I'm going to mark 10 and 15 sixteenths on my board. Square that across. I'm going to put that mark flush with the top of this. I'm going to set the rip fence at 5 and an eighth and I'm going to check it both the front of the blade and the back of the blade to make sure that it's running square. When you're ripping boards on a table saw, you don't want the blade to come past the material that you're cutting too much. Also, when I'm when I'm cutting, I'm looking at this point right here and this point right here and making sure that both points are making contact. I'm also making sure I'm watching the blade to see what it's doing. And I also have to look down and make sure that when I rip this, that this board is going to get on top of that. Once you've ripped a piece, you want to check it to make sure that you're actually cutting it the right size. That's perfect. Sometimes boards have these staples in them. It's best to take them out so they don't dull your blade. Also, if you were to put this against the fence, it's going to push it, push the board off almost an eighth of an inch, which will throw off your number. The reason I went with five eighths is because over time the boards will shrink, and I didn't want the steel to make the floor uneven. The screws that I'm using are self-tapping screws, and they should go through this metal, but from my experiences, they don't go through it. So I'm pre-drilling with a three sixteenths drill bit. On the box of screws, it's going to tell you what size Phillips head you need, which is a number three. So I made sure I get a number three uh, driver. I need to fill in this web right here so I can attach a ledger board so I can run my joist into it. So I took a uh, two by six and I ripped it down on a 12 degree angle on both sides. And I made sure that this dimension would uh, fit inside of that piece right here. The construction adhesive I'm using is a PL premium construction adhesive. So I'm just going to apply some glue. I've got to put one on the other side so now on the other side there's that half inch steel plate so I had to notch this out I just took a circular saw I set the depth to a half an inch and I uh, scored it a bunch of times and then I removed it with a chisel I'll just do my layout again first one's going to go in the center one foot six high two foot six low the reason I'm staggering them up and down is if you were just to go in the center and, and a split happened in this piece of wood, uh, the, those screws would be useless and those boards would end up falling out. So before I get too far ahead with drilling all those holes, I want to make sure that I have an equal distance on the board. Since I ripped these at a five and an eighth, they're a little bit thicker than the, uh, the steel. So I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to feel, make sure it's the same distance. I just pre-drill the hole and I'll install a screw. I also want to check the middle. Sometimes boards have bows and crowns in them. So it's a little low here. 
So to make sure this is good, I'm just gonna raise up on it a little bit. Pre-drill my hole. Perfect, now I can go back and get all my holes in. If you want up to date posts of my build, check out my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram page at Tiny House Customs. Now, because I'm going real close to the end of the board, if I take the end of the nail and I just doll it over like that so it's blunt, it won't split the wood. Make sure I'm flush. So you can see here I got a board that's twisted. I'm gonna fix that. I'm going to just do a toenail. A toenail is just an angled nail. I'm going to bring it flush. Then I can nail up my end. A lot of people use a, a sill seal, which is a, a vapor barrier in between metal and wood. Uh, I don't think that's really necessary. I could be completely wrong in making a huge mistake, but for years people built houses and put the, the wood directly on the foundation and there was never any problem so I'm gonna go with that So my shower is going to end up being sitting in this corner over here, and I'm going to have a drain that comes down. Um, so if I measure in three and a half inches, and then I measure over, I'm going to use a 32 inch shower. If I measure 32 and I find the center of that, I know that my plumbing is going to come right down there probably. So I want to go uh, three quarters each way. It's going to be roughly right there. That's going to end up getting cut out. So I just want to make sure that I got some type of fastener pretty close to that and I think these two screws are close enough so that when I do remove this piece of wood it's not gonna it's not gonna structurally affect these pieces now that I have all the rim board installed and the webbing filled in I gotta get ready to put my joist in. I'm gonna be running my joist front to back and uh, I could attach my hanger to the uh, the piece that I put on the web but the metal sticking out a little bit and I think it could affect it so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna add this on here like that yeah, I like that. So this board's got a pretty bad crown in it. It's shooting up like that and it's diving off on the end here. So I'm gonna secure this end where it's good. And then right here where it's good. The middle's gotta come down, so I'm gonna do a toenail. Toenail is just put one right in there like that. Sometimes I find if you use two, you get a little better driving force. You see that? Freaking perfect. It's too much. This end's got to come up just a little bit, so I'm just going to do the opposite with a toenail on the bottom. Set. If you enjoyed this video be sure to check out part two the link will be in the description below if you're new to my channel and you want to follow my build make sure you hit that subscribe button thanks for watching guys yeah you're getting bored of watching this me too hello i know you probably hate these calls but trust that this one's coming to you and it's running your life for a reason if you're like many people in the world right now and you've been praying for a financial lifeline, yeah. you're going to want to press one right now. Okay. More than today is the day that you get to learn exactly how we can do the same for you. Our system is unlike anything you've ever seen before. So press one right now for more information. And if you're making all... Oh, I hung up. Now you can see here, I, I screwed up. So I'm a little short here. That's going to be all right. When I do my plywood, it'll hide that. And that plus trim is going to go on there. This is not a major issue. It just looks like I don't know what I'm doing.